guys, it's Julian, and today I'm super excited to be bringing you part one in this new two-part series that I'm going to be doing, where I'm making a minimal tech house track from scratch into a nice little idea in the style. We're going to be talking about that style I've been talking about a lot on the channel recently, you know, sort of like the solid grooves, repopulate Mars style. And today, I'm going to be starting with just the kick and the bass low-end groove. And then tomorrow, I'm going to show you making the rest of the stuff on top of it. So, for this video, I'm going to be using this new sample pack that I just dropped, which is called Definitive Minimal Tech House Kicks and Baseline Grooves Volume 1. And what this is, is it's this new pack I put together, where you can see, basically what you get is you get 20 kicks, and they're all super hard-hitting, punchy kicks in this style, I'll show you. As well as you also get 20 bass lines in audio form, as well as MIDI format, so that you can really go in and be able to have everything that you need to start a track. And as you can see, you also, on top of that, you get these bonus free drums. So you get some hi-hats and claps and snares and percussions so that you have everything that you need, as well as some bonus effects. Plus, there's these demo projects, which you probably heard at the link at the top of the description on my band camp. I'll play them for you. So with this pack, you get the bass lines and the kicks, as well as all of these bonus items. So you really get pretty much everything that you need to start the track, plus five nice templates as Ableton files that you can go and work with. So it's a really good pack for this. I'm going to be using it for this video. This is a really great way to support me if you guys are enjoying these videos and you want to get some really good sounds to work with. Plus, you know, these are really, I think, some of the best sounds for this style on the market. Like, I really don't think there's people that are making kicks that are going to be much better than these ones. I've really gone in and I've studied what's going on and yeah so if you want these the link is at the top of the description this is a really great resource for producing these style of tracks and I'm going to be using it to show you everything in this video today and yeah thank you so much for the support guys and let's get started so what we're going to start with is I'm going to move the tempo up to 126 and what we're going to do you know usually like you would want to do maybe like 125 to 130 anywhere between there can work really well 126 is really good, 127, 128 is also really good. I'm going to do 126 for today, and I always start with the kick. Like, no matter what you're doing, pretty much with any dance music, but especially with this style, where it's so groove-focused and so much based around the bass line and the kick and how that's all working together, I always start with the kick, you know, because you really can't go wrong if you just start with that, like, Like a really good kick, like this one. I'll take it, I'll turn it up a little bit. And then once we have that, we can put in our pattern. So we're just going to do quarter notes. And also usually convert the kick to mono. Just because sometimes kicks can have a little bit of weird stereo stuff. And we're also going to put a bit of drum bus on this. And there we go. So we have our kick in there. Like, the kick is already hitting. It's really punchy. You know, we have it in mono as well. Like, again, you, you usually want to make sure your low end stuff is in mono. I usually do this before I show you in the video, but I'm really trying to show you everything here. It's like, if you have your kick in stereo a little bit, or if there's, like, stuff happening, it can be a bit weird. And then the drum bus is just giving it some more punch. And if you already have a really good sample, you really don't have to do too much. Like, the idea is that the saturation or the drum bus or whatever you're going to use is going to be just an extra little boost to really make it sound full. But the sound is already really good on its own before you do any of this. So once we have the kick and it's thumping really hard, that is when I will go in and get the bass line started. So... I'm going to use a MIDI file from this pack, and then I'm going to explain to you, like, how to write a bass line like this. Let's take that. Because that one actually shows a lot of different techniques that I'm going to explain. So we have this bass line here. I'll put operator on it for now, just so we can hear it. So 
So you can see, here is the MIDI from this bass line. So this is very much like a lot of the bass lines in the style of track, where essentially the idea is, is you want to create a lot of low end and a lot of sound in the low end, but with like a very minimal amount of notes. So if you notice, this is only three notes. We just have A, A sharp, and D. And then this up here is just an octave of the A down there. So, you know, right off the bat, by just choosing like two, three, maybe four notes if you really need to push it, and just sticking to those, you can make your bass line a lot more, just a lot better sounding, honestly, because really, this isn't as much about the notes, all things considered. Like, you know, obviously it's in key with the track, and it's going to fit in in that regard, but it's really about how it's like, you know, bouncing with that kick. All the syncopation and that, dun -dun -dun, like between the kick and bass line, that kind of stuff. You know, the bass line in this style of track is, an, is the intersection of a rhythmic element and a melodic element, but it's definitely a lot more about the rhythmic. So, like, just making sure that, like, you have lots of notes happening and that the pattern has a lot of syncopation, meaning essentially just a lot of 16th notes. Like, this right here is a perfect example of syncopation. I'm gonna play it with the kick. You know, that's what creates groove, is the fact that the kick is so straightforward, and then the bass line has all these 16th notes and it's bouncing around, but then the simple notes, keeping the notes really simple, is what is going to keep it grounding, you know, because obviously, yeah, if it's doing all these different notes that we have here, and like it's constantly jumping around, like, we'll just add in a bunch of extra notes that are in the scale, like technically this is in key. You know, it's not really quite as as much of like a groove anymore. It kind of just becomes a mess when you start to add too many notes. So it's a lot of notes, but really not that many notes because you're only using three notes in the scale and then you're just using a lot of notes with those notes, if that makes any sense. Now, for the sound design on these types of basses, so there's a few different ways you can do it. There's, I'll show you two here. So what we're gonna do first is using FM and the idea here is that we're going to take a sound that is very deep and bassy, but then we're gonna add a little bit more harmonic content on top of it. And we're gonna create a sound that's still very deep and bassy like that, but it's not going to be like so like, just so much only sub essentially. It's gonna have some harmonic content. And what I mean by that is you can kind of see this right here. If I put on the spectrum, see how the bass line on the spectrum here, like it really just has this one point where it's jumping up. It has all these, but that's just, artifacts from operator this is really the only like harmonic that you're hearing it's just a fundamental harmonic and then when we start to bring in some you can see then we bring in more harmonics there so what we'll do is i'm going to just use the second oscillator that's a sine wave and we're going to make this one a bit plucky using the envelope here and that's going to really help with the rhythmic quality of the bass Here you get a little bit more of a pluck on that. And now you can really hear how it grooves with the kick too. And you don't want to do a whole lot. You can see like just a tiny bit like that. It's really gonna do everything you need. You can bring in that third oscillator a little as well. And there we go. So now we have like a really nice and fat bass wave. And then we just add a bit of like some type of saturation or I really like using drum bus to just give it that extra fatness and we'll side chain it to the kick. And there we go. So that's one way of creating the bass. Another way that you could create this bass would be to take a very harmonically rich waveform and then dial it back a little bit, but still keep the harmonics in the lower end, and that's gonna create a really nice fat bass too. So I'll use analog for this. So the idea I usually try to do is like you start with a square wave, and then what you're gonna do is, I'll turn off oscillator two for now, we might bring that in later, but essentially it's just a square wave, and then the square wave, as you can hear, has like a very fat, low end to it, because it's a very big and just full sounding waveform. So then if we just take the low pass filter and bring it down 
I use a little bit of the envelope as well to make it a bit plucky like with the last one, but not too, too much. If you dial that back and bring in the resonance, There you go, you get a similar thing where it's a very sine wave-esque bass, but it's got more harmonic content to it, it's a lot fatter, and yeah, just better overall. We can even add some unison to this, because the unison inside of analog is in mono, so it's not going to make it all stereo. But yeah, you can hear you get really similar results with each bass, it's just kind of how you prefer to do it, and you can do a lot with these too, like... You know, I can take this and bring in a saw wave now and make it even fatter. So there's a lot of different options. Which for now, I'm actually going to go with this one because I like this a little bit more for this. It really just depends on, like, your track. And the other trick that I'm going to show you guys, and I do this a lot in the videos, but I don't explain it in depth too often is this little thing with the EQ. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take an EQ on here and we're cutting the bass at 100 hertz. So if I take the Q, usually you want to tighten the Q up on that. You don't want to just do it like that because that's going to be, that's going to cut out too much. But you just cut it like right at 100 hertz like that. And I'll just show you the difference. Here's without it. And then with it. It's really subtle. But you can hear the kick quite a bit more when you turn this on. And the reason why is simply the kick, if I show you on the spectrum, you can really see it. The kick really is going to punch like right around there. Like if you look at that, that's the loudest frequency range in the kick. And so by cutting that in the bass, you know, the bass tends to have a lot of stuff in that range too. But it has a lot more stuff kind of in the lower ranges. So we're just cutting that out because we really don't even need that on the bass. And it's just a really great way to cut some mud out of the mix. And then the last step, once you have your bass and your kick together, would be, I usually put them into a group and just process them a little bit together with a bit of saturation. Like, you don't want to do too much. Maybe, like, that might even be too much. But here's without it. And then with it. It's really subtle. But there's like a synergy that you get in the low end that you just can't get any other way. Like, you really are only going to get this if your kick and bass are going into that same saturation at the same time. Like, you just can't quite get it because what's happening is the saturation adds harmonic content to a sound. Like we were talking about, you know, you can have a sound that is just one harmonic and then you add some saturation on top and it's going to add more harmonics on top of that and it's going to make it fatter and fuller sounding just because it's more sound. So, by doing this on the group, what we're going to do is we're adding harmonics a little bit to the bass. So, like, say the bass is mostly happening in this range where my cursor is, then if we move it, we kind of add some more on, then it starts to kind of fill out these ranges where the kick is happening. But again, it's not, like, the same as if you just have your bass line, like, super messy. It's different when you're adding harmonics versus having, like, a sound that would just already be having a bunch of extra stuff in that range. But yeah, so we're adding some harmonics onto the bass line, we're adding some harmonics onto the kick, and you get overlap there. And that's what makes them feel really glued together, is that now they just feel like they're closer together because they have more of the same sort of frequencies and harmonics going on. And also a good tip with this is if you turn that bass frequency down, it'll get a little bit less crunchy. Turn it down so we're not clipping. And yeah, there we are. So now we have gone from scratch and created this nice kick and bass groove in this track. This is a really, really strong foundation for a track like this. Like This This is typically how I start a track, too. Like, whenever I make these videos that you guys see me do, you know, it always starts with the kick, then I move to the bass line, then we do stuff. So I recommend you start your tracks like this as well. You can even just follow along with what I'm doing here. But just starting with that kick, you know, making sure the kick is really good already on its own. Then getting the bass line to work really well on its own. And then getting them to work really well together. You know, you're just working through the process. So then when it comes time to add the drums and the effects and percussion and melodies and all that stuff that we're going to do in tomorrow's video. You can see, like, you know, it, it's all stemming off of this. If this isn't right, there's no point in even starting that stuff. And yeah, so that's how you go about doing it. So that is going to be it for this one, guys. 
I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the definitive Minimal Tech House Kicks and Baseline Grooves Volume 1 with the free bonus items right at the top of the description on my Bandcamp. Can't miss it. It's a really great way to support me. If you guys are enjoying these videos, I don't make a whole lot just off of the YouTube videos. But with the sample packs and different stuff like this, I'm able to keep going and keep bringing you guys new tutorials that just aren't out there on the internet every single day. So link to that is at the top of the description. You know, you get the baselines. Plus, you get the demo tracks and the project files for those. Plus, you get the really fat kicks. Plus, you get the bonus effects and bonus drums. So, you're really getting everything that you need to make a track in this style. And, yeah, thank you so much for the support. And I look forward to hearing these sounds in your tracks, guys. And, yeah, I will see you tomorrow with another video.